Thanks for joining us for this podcast from Atlee Church. Atlee is a safe place for those who've given up on church or never went. Our mission is to reach seekers and equip believers to love God, love themselves, love others, and serve the world. We'd love to have you connect with us at one of our physical campuses or online for a weekend service. You can find out more about our locations and service times on our website. We hope that you will be encouraged and challenged to take the next step in your personal faith journey through the message you're about to hear. Isn't it crazy how fast time flies by sometimes? I mean, you feel like you're in one season of life, and then you're in the next season of life, and before you know it, you think a few weeks or a month or maybe in a few years go by, and you're a completely different season of life. It's crazy just how fast it all goes by. I mean, for me, I remember when I was in high school, there was this girl, her name was Kirsten, and she was a total hottie, and I was like, I have to go on a date with that girl. And I remember talking to my dad. I you know, saw her and I was like, Dad, one day I'm going to marry that girl. And she was way out of my league. And so my dad was trying to be the honest dad that he was. And he was like, in your wildest dreams, son. <laughs> Real supportive father. <laughs> but he was really true. She was way out of my league. And I had no idea how I was going to get this girl to like me. But I remember talking to her and and hanging out with her, and it came to her 16th birthday party. And I remember during that time, I was like, this is going to be the night when the right song comes on, I'm going to ask this girl to be my girlfriend. And so we got that awkward, you know, middle school, high school slow dance thing going, and the song comes on, and it was the perfect song. If anybody was going to say yes to somebody like me, it was during this song. It was that one you're like a dream come true, to Just want to be with you. That's the first time and the last time you will ever hear me sing from this stage. <laughs> but that song came on, and I was like, this is the one. She's going to say yes. I said, girl, we got to dance. So we get together. We're doing the awkward dance. And I said, hey, um, do you want to, like, uh, be my girlfriend? And she was like, yeah. And Every bit of emotion in me was like, yeah, you know, like, score. She wanted to be my girlfriend. This is awesome. And so 16 years old, we start dating, and it's going great, and it's crazy, you know, how, you know, after that, we, you know, we're in high school, and we went to prom together. Here's a picture of us going to prom together. Look, she's beautiful, and I look like um, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, right? <laughs> But yeah, we had a, a good time. Like I said, she's way out of my league, guys. And it's just cool how our relationship progressed. Uh, we graduated high school. We graduated college. Eventually, I got up the nerve to ask her to marry me. And now it's crazy. Uh, we've been married um, over six years, almost seven years now. We got a kid, another kid on the way. And it's just amazing what our relationship has been over the last few years of, of seeing God work in our lives and going through the hard times together and the good times together. And it's just, I guess, amazing to see how relationships work. Because, you know, relationships can be some of the best things in the world to experience. But they can also be some of the hardest things for us to experience and work through and go through together. Marriage, especially, can be hard. I remember when we first got married, we moved to Mechanicsville, and I started a job here at Atlee, and um, I was going to work for the first day, and uh, my wife, she hadn't found a job yet, so she's at home, and she's like, listen, Trey, I'm going to take the whole day to decorate our apartment. It's going to look totally different when you get back, and me, a new husband, I was like, sweet, sounds good, thank you. I'll see you when I get back, so come to the church and work, and I get home, and 
I opened the door and she's like, are you ready to see our apartment? I spent all day decorating it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. Let's go on a tour. So we go to the living room and it was a really small apartment. So you didn't really get to move, but that, you know, far away from things. And so I'll go in the living room. The living room looks great. It's decorated. I was like, man, it smells good in here. Then I, you know, go to the kitchen and it's got food in the fridge. I'm like, awesome. And this is great. Like marriage is awesome. And then after that, we go to the bathroom and it's got shower curtain and the toilet's clean. I was like, wow, you know, she really did a good job today. Well, then we go to the last room and this is when it gets weird. We went to the bedroom and I opened the door and I saw something I never saw before. Our bed was covered in pillows. And I was like, listen, It's just me and you. What's up with all the pillows? Are we having a sleepover or something I didn't know about? So I I kindly, not so kindly, say, and I didn't mean for it to come out of my mouth this way. It just, it was in my brain. I said, what's up with all the pillows? She said, what do you mean what's up with all the pillows? Aren't they nice? I picked them out. They match and they're fluffy. And I'm like, They're taking up the entire bed. It's like a a big cloud of pillows. Where am I supposed to sleep? And she's like, you don't like it? I'm like, not really. (laughs) Where where am I supposed to go to bed at, babe? I'm I'm used to the bachelor life. You know, I got the twin bed with the pillow and the blanket. That's it. What is this thing? And she's like, I know. I thought it'd be so cozy for us, but it really hurts me that you don't like it. And I'm like, it hurts you? What do you mean it hurts you? And she goes, I work so hard on this all day, and you come home and tell me you don't like it. Do you know how that makes me feel? And this started the first conflict in our marriage, <laughs> thanks to my foot and my mouth. But isn't that funny? I, I was just throwing out a comment. I didn't know that she was emotionally tied to the pillows. Apparently, women, pillows are an important deal in your life. I'm learning. <laughs> Fast forward a few weeks later, we're out hanging out with some friends, and these were close friends, and kind of, if you know me, I'm a very big extrovert. I love hanging out. I'm life of the party. I just want to be around people, but sometimes I say things, and I'm like, why did I say that? That was awkward. So we're in this moment, and I said something. I don't even know what I said, but it was awkward, and I was like, okay, it's that moment where I hope no one heard that comment, and I really hope no one comments on that comment, and we can just move on. Well, my wife, so loving as she is, goes, Trey, that was weird. I can't believe you said that. That is so awkward. And I was like, oh, no. Like, why did she say that? I'm like, yeah, it was a little weird. She's like, yeah, you sound like an idiot. And in that moment, she was just trying to be playful and fun, but didn't realize that that hurt me. The rest of the night, I was quiet, shut down, didn't say anything. We get in the car, and she's like, you were around all your friends. You're usually the life of the party. What's up with you? And I was like, do you know what you said earlier? That really hurt. She's like, I was just joking. I was like, you don't know what that means. It made me feel so stupid in front of all of those people. Why would you say that? Which again, another conflict arises in our marriage. Now, we know it wasn't just about the pillows or the stupid comment. There was something deeper going on there. Something that we hadn't learned yet of how to manage conflict when it came our way. We were constantly deflating each other and tearing each other down, and we didn't even know it. So it took us some years to figure this out, that we are two different people, two completely different people. And she needs one thing, and I need another. And all along, we thought each other needed the same thing, but it wasn't like that. And so today, we're kicking off a relationship series titled Love and Respect. And we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks how to communicate better, how to handle conflict better, and honestly, how to have better relationships and marriages. And let me just give a disclaimer. For those of you, maybe this is your first time, or maybe you're coming in and you're not married or you're divorced and you're like, this isn't really applicable to me. This has to deal with all of us because all of us, whether we like it or not, are in relationship with people every single day. Whether, you know, uh, it's a spouse, whether it's a coworker, whether if it's just a friend, whether it's just someone that you're, you know, with all the time, maybe it's a family member, we're all hanging out with people all the time and we constantly can be in conflict with each other. So it's important to know how each of us handle conflict. 
And it's important to know how to communicate better so that the other person understands what we're really trying to say. But I will say this, for those of you who are married in here, this will have a lot to do with you. And I hope that you take the tools and the things that we talk about over the next few weeks and apply them to your life and see if God doesn't do something incredible in your marriage and in your relationship. Because the reason this whole series started for me was my wife and I, we were watching people go through the conflict like we went through, but handled it differently. And now today, they're no longer together, they're not talking, their kids are miserable, and all of these different things are happening to people our age and even older to people that we looked up to, their relationships are falling apart. And the last thing that God wants is for our relationships to be destroyed. And so we wanted to take just a few weeks and talk about relationships and the importance of them and how to do them better so that they will last and not be destroyed. And so I hope you take the next few weeks and learn some cool stuff. Um, For those of you who don't know me, my name is Trey Kreitzer. I'm the Scottsdale campus pastor and one of the teaching pastors here on staff. And I'm I'm really glad to be with you over the next few weeks. And I think we're going to learn a lot together as we unpack this series a little bit. So what are these special ingredients? What are these things that we could add to our relationships to make them better? Well, I'm so glad you asked because that's what we're going to jump into right now. If you have a Bible, let's open to Ephesians. It's in the New Testament of our Bible. And we're going to look at chapter 5, which is a very popular marriage kind of scripture. And we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 20, or 33 together. And let me set it up this way. This passage of scripture is written by a guy named Paul. He was writing to a church very similar to ours in a place called Ephesus around 60 to 61 AD, so a long time ago. And he's writing people in this passage just to kind of encourage them in their life. The first part of this verse in scripture in Ephesians talks about God and talks about a lot of really cool theological things about God. But then as we get into Ephesians a little bit more, Paul starts talking about how to do life and relationships with each other better. And he's more talking to Christians, people who place their faith and trust in Christ at this point. But even today, if, you, if you're just coming in and you don't know what your faith is or you're just kind of checking out church, this can directly apply to you as well. So we're all on the same playing field here when it comes to learning from what Paul has to say. So let's see what this verse teaches us about relationships. And I just want you to look at a few words in here that maybe stick out to you as we read this together. Ephesians 5, 22 starts this way. It says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing with water through the word. And present her to himself as a radiant church without stain, wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one has ever hated their own body, but they fed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. And we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. And I love that he says this. He starts by talking about there's this equal submission that's supposed to take place. And then he says two people are supposed to be joined together to become one in marriage. Now you got to think about this. Two people that pay bills differently, two people that wash dishes differently, two people that wash their clothes differently, coming together to become one. And I think Paul nails it. He says, this is a profound mystery. For those of you who are married, you understand this because you're like, I don't know how this works sometimes. It's a mystery. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. And this is the part I want us to hone in on and focus in today. It says this, however, each one of you also must love. Everybody say love. Love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect. Everybody say respect. Respect her husband. So, Paul gives us two special ingredients when it comes to making our relationships work. 
And he says, wives, respect your husbands. And husbands, love your wives. Why would God instruct us to do this? Why does Paul make this a huge important thing? Well, it's funny. The University of Washington studied over 2,000 couples for 20 years. It's a long period of time to study people. But all the studies and research that were done, they found the two most important things in any relationship in order for them to last and work was there for to be love and respect in the relationship. And it didn't matter their age. It didn't matter their background. It didn't matter what they've been through in life. It didn't matter anything. All it said was, if you love and respect no matter who you are, it made a relationship better. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you don't know about the problems that I have. If I didn't have the problems in money with my marriage, everything would be better. If I didn't have the problem with the in-laws, don't point to your spouse during this time. It gets real weird. But the in-laws can be crazy sometimes, right? And then we got the problem with, you know, the kids. We got the problem with this. If we didn't have the problems, our relationship would be better. But I have found that not to be true. Because no matter what problem you have, life is full of problems. Problems cause stress. Stress causes us to react in a certain way, which really shows our spouse who we really are. When we have problems, we have stress, and we have things that don't go our way, it shows the other person who we really are on the inside. It brings out the inner us, the parts that a lot of people don't see. So it doesn't matter what the problem, it matters about the person, who the person is, and what the person is willing to do to make the relationship work. There was another study done with about 7,000 people. And the question was asked to these people is this. When in conflict with your spouse, do you feel unloved or disrespected? And here were the results from that study. 80% of men said that they, in conflict, felt disrespected. While 72% of women said that they feel unloved. So there's a difference here between the way in which a male and a female operates and needs different things. We see that men in conflict don't need to be coddled and pat on the back. They need to feel respected. And women in conflict, they don't need to be told what to do. They want to be loved. And so there's a huge disconnect here sometimes when we're in conflict because we're giving something to somebody that they don't need. We're giving them stuff that we think they need, but they really don't need. Now, all of us at the end of the day need both love and respect. That's just a natural feeling for all of us. But the felt need in conflict, especially in marriage, is men tend to need more respect and women tend to need more love. And so how do we do this? How do we love and respect each other? Why does God command us to do this? Let's start with this. Why would God command a husband to love their wife? Shouldn't they just do that? Well, I've noticed, especially since we you know, have kids now, uh, my wife, when we had our son, is so loving. Like, our kid can draw on the wall, spit up his food, throw milk across the counter, and she is just so loving and patient and cares for him. And for me, I need a little bit of that love sometimes because it drives me crazy. I don't love as naturally as she loves. Women, you just have this natural, God-given ability to love with unconditional grace sometimes. Now, do you blow it sometimes and it doesn't work out and you get frustrated and impatient? Sure. But you tend to love better than us guys. You tend to show your feelings more. You tend to be better about sharing your emotions to where guys were really good at bottling it up. And so why would God command us as, as men to love our wives? Is because it doesn't come as natural to us. But it's what women need, especially in a marriage relationship. They need to know that they are loved. They need to know that they are cared for. They need to see some emotion from us as guys sometimes. That's why the writer of Colossians says this, Colossians 3.19, it says, Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Why? Because women need love. Women need love. They need to be reassured of your love. Not just one time at the altar when you said, I do. They need to know constantly that you love them through your words and your actions. I'll give you an example of this. My wife, 
um, this week, I've been trying to, to do better with her and to show her love. And so I went. I know she was tired. She's pregnant with our second kid. She just, you know, didn't get breakfast that morning. She left the house. So I went down to the coffee shop in, in our town, and I, I got a coffee, and I got her a bagel. And I just wrote on the cup, I love you. Have a great day. And I put it on her desk at work, and I left. When we get home that day, she's like glowing. And I'm like, are you okay? Did you eat the wrong cereal? Like, are you all right? Like, what's going on? And she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you went and got me coffee and a bagel this morning. That was so nice of you. But she's like, I didn't really care about that. It's like, what? That's the part I would care about. You know, you got a, you got a free bagel and coffee on me, girl. But she's like, listen, you wrote I love you on the cup. And that meant the world to me. I'm so glad you did. Thank you for showing me that you love me. And I was like, I just texted you, I love you, like three minutes ago. Like, why did you need to hear that? And she goes, you went out of your way to tell me that you love me. And you don't know how much that means. She needed to feel loved. She needed to hear it. She needed to see it. And through one little act of kindness, I got to give her and show her that. She wanted to feel loved. Guys, we said, you know, I love you, and our wife told us they loved us when we said I do, and they probably tell us when we die, and we're good with that, right? Like, that's all we need. But women need to make sure and reassure that we love them and we care for them, and making sure that love is something that we give away. Now, why are wives commanded to respect your husband? Because can't you just love them and they be okay? No, because that's not how we're wired. Guys, there's like this inner man code that we have and say if someone comes to you guys and threatens your family or your kids there's something that boils up inside of you that that would go after and chase after that guy to make sure your family's protected because you live with this sense of respect now we may not carry it out or live it out every day but there's something about our core that we live by this this respect man code don't mess with me or my family And the same is true when it comes to our relationships. We want to know that our spouse cares about us and values us above everybody else and respects us. And so when we feel disrespected, it makes us feel less of a man. When there's constant nagging or constant just criticism or there's no encouragement, guys, we can't live like that because our core needs to feel respected. It's how God created us. 1 Peter tells us this way, and Three, verses 1 through 2, it says, They may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe your respectful behavior. So it's not about a bunch of words. It's not about a bunch of I love yous. It's about the idea that we're respected by behavior, by action. Guys, we need respect. But some of you, especially wives in here, are probably saying something like this in your head right now. You're probably saying, well, he doesn't deserve my respect. I will respect him once he starts loving me. But he's trifling, sitting on the couch eating Cheetos and not doing anything with his life. He don't deserve respect, right? That's how we want to say it. But that doesn't give you the right to not do what God commanded you to do. God commands us to love and respect each other. Not because of what the other person's doing. It's because of what we want to do. That's where the difference is. And that's what makes relationships work better when we start focusing on what the other person is needing. Guys need to feel respected. Women need to feel loved. What happens when we neglect these things? We constantly deflate each other. Go back to my beginning story. When I walked into the bedroom and saw the pillows and made the comment, it wasn't about the comment. It was about that, that I didn't show my wife the love that she was looking for and the validation that she wanted from me. Go back to the party where we're hanging out with friends. My wife embarrassed me in front of those people. It wasn't the embarrassing comment. It said it didn't make me feel respected in front of those people. And so when we constantly deflate each other, we get into a really bad cycle that doesn't end well. And it's known as the crazy cycle. And this is what it looks like. It says this, without love. So women, when you don't feel loved, you react. And the way you react is you don't show respect. But without respect, the guy reacts. Husband gets mad and upset. He reacts without love. And this cycle just keeps going on and on and on and on. Because none of us want to see the need in the other person. 
we're constantly saying, well, he's not giving me what I, what I need, or she's not giving me what I need, so we're just going to keep bickering and arguing and, and being frustrated with one another. And this cycle just goes on and on and on, and nobody ever is satisfied in the relationship. And so what do we do when we get caught in the crazy cycle? Maybe some of you are in this right now, where there's no love to your spouse, there's no respect in your relationship, and it seems like it's, it's in chaos right now. How do we mend the fences to make this better? How do we get out of the cycle? The first thing is we've got to realize that there's a difference. Listen to this. Matthew 19, 4, Jesus speaking says this. He says, haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the creator made them male and female? That there's a difference in which we are wired and created. Men, we need certain things. And women, you need certain things. And at the end of the day, if those needs aren't being met, there's going to be constant conflict in a relationship. We are different. But what happens when we get in conflict is we try to change the person on the other end of the conflict through the way that we think they need to be changed. Instead of looking at what we can give them, we need to look at what they really need first. So hopefully when you came in, you got one of these. It's a program. Go ahead and pull that out. I'm just going to give you two quick things to think about today before we leave to help us figure out how to fix whatever's going on in our relationships right now in order to make them the relationships that God wants them to be. Two blanks on the back. The first one is this. We have to change our perspective. Number one, if we want our relationships to look different, if we want this process to change, we have to change our perspective. Because all of us come in with a perspective. Guys, we come in with our perspective. Girls, you come in with your perspective. And it never tends to meet in the middle sometimes. It kind of looks something like this sometimes. Guys, we come in with our blue lenses on, right? We come in with them, and this is what we do. We get in conflict, we put on our dude shades, right? You guys all look like Smurfs right now, by the way. (laughs) But the idea is this, is that, guys, we get in conflict, and we're trying to tell our wives, you know, I'm going to respect you on this, I care about you, all this stuff, and we're listening, but we're not showing much emotion, we're not showing love, and we're coming at it through this, this blue man lens. And what's happening is it's not changing anything. We're just giving them what we think they want, what, not what they need. And so what happens is the relationship doesn't get repaired because I'm not giving my spouse what they really need. So I have to look through a different perspective. Wives, the same thing. You have pink lenses that you look through the world with, right? These are going to look awesome, by the way. I should have never done this. The idea is that you look through pink lenses. You see everything through love and gush and all this stuff and emotions. And when you're in conflict with the male and you're trying to get them to hear your side and share their feelings. And they're like, listen, you're coming on too strong. And I don't understand what you're saying. And there's just too many feelings involved. And and you're trying to give love, but really they want respect. And it's not working because you're seeing your relationship through your lens. And so what happens when we have these two opposing lenses trying to fix a conflict. We have to look through the other lens. We have to realize there's another perspective out there. And so guys, when you're in a conflict, here's the question I want you to think about. Are there times in conflict where I made my wife feel unloved? Are there times when we were in heated arguments and things weren't going right that I made my wife feel unloved? Through what I said, or what I did. When you ask that question, you're starting to look through their lens, not just your own. Wives, here's a question you can ask. Are there times in conflict where I disrespected my husband and I didn't even know it? Where at times I belittled him, made him feel not good enough, didn't encourage him, Was I just looking through my lens and not their lens? When we are able to take off our lens for a moment and look through the others, it's amazing the perspective that we can gain. Because a lot of times we're just looking out for us and what we want in a conflict. We want to win. We want to get it right. But at the time, it's not about winning. It's about resolving. 
And so if you can get to the point where you can, in a, in a conflict, look through the other person's lens and see the other person for who they really are and what they really need, it will change the way in which your conflicts are dealt with. And it'll honestly change how you see your spouse. So number one, the first thing we got to do, we have to change our perspective, which leads us to the second piece today that we're going to talk about. Number two, we have to break the cycle. Number two, break the cycle. We looked at the crazy cycle before. If one person doesn't get what they want, they don't give the other person what they need. And this cycle continues to go on and on and on until one person is willing to step up and be the bigger person and say, I'm not going to worry about receiving. I'm going to give what my spouse needs, not because they deserve it or they earn it, but because God has called me to do it. God calls us to love each other. God calls us to respect each other. And when we realize it's not this game where I'm only giving if I'm getting, but it's about obeying God, then our spouse will see a different person. So men in here, my challenge to you is this. When can you step up this week and show your wife the love that she deserves? Not because she's respecting you or giving you everything that you need, but you're loving her just because you're called to. You're loving her because of who she is. And wives, my challenge to you is this. When can you this week respect your husband? Not because of what they're doing, not because they got it all together, but because God calls you to. Because you want it for the better men of the marriage and the relationship to work. How can we look through the other person's lenses and how can we break the cycle it starts with getting our eyes off of ourselves and onto the needs of the person on the other side of the conflict. And so that's my challenge for you this week is to think about that. How can you break the cycle? Somebody has to do it. Somebody's got to be willing to step up and break the cycle. Now, for some of you, you may be in a harmful relationship where there is no respect you can give because it is in a rough place. And in those moments, that's a completely different situation. But I'm talking about relationships that you're just choosing not to give the other person what they need because you're not getting what you want out of the relationship. Something has to give and somebody has to break the cycle. For me, I, uh, I found this out not too long ago. Um, my parents called me. They were cleaning out their house and they found this old box upstairs in my old room and they were like, hey, we found this old box. Do you want to come and get it? And so I was like, sure, I don't know what's in it. I'll come grab it. And so I go to my parents' house and I pick up this box that they had and open it and inside are all the letters that my wife and I exchanged when we were dating and that we wrote to each other. And I had kept them in a box just, you know, for keepsake. And it was so cool to read through some of these old letters that my wife and I wrote each other. It's amazing to see how much she cared for me how much she respected me back then, how much, like, I could have hung the moon for her. Like, everything, she just wrote all these incredible things about me and our relationship. And I looked at what I wrote her and how much I poured out my feelings and my emotions and things that I didn't even know I had to her. And it was great. And, man, she, you could just tell, was just in love with all the things that I was saying and doing. And we were so intentional about telling each other what we meant to one another. There was this love, there was this bond, there was this, this grace that we had for one another that was just incredible when I was reading through these letters. But you know what it made me think of? When's the last time my wife received one of these letters from me recently? When's the last time that I showed her the love that I used to share with her? And when's the last time she respected me like she used to when we were dating and we were just so in love with one another? Now I get it, different seasons come and change, but our love and respect for each other shouldn't change. I should show her the love that I have for her every single day. And as much love as she's showing me, I, I really, I love it when she shows me the respect that, that I care about her opinion more than anybody else's. But at the end of the day, one of us has to choose to break the cycle and to share the love and respect that we need again. So who's it going to be? Who's going to be willing to step up and say, you know what? I'm going to give love this week. 
you know what? I'm going to give respect this week, and I'm going to see how God could use it. When you came in today, you got a little note card that looks like this. Here's my homework and challenge for you as you leave here today at all of our campuses. Is the idea that I want you to take this note card. And fellas, I'll pick on you for a minute. I want you to fill this card full of love and emotions to your spouse. I want you to fill it up, mushy, gushy stuff, like the good stuff. Fill it up. Tell them how you feel. Tell them what you really mean. I know this is hard because we you know, bottle it all up and it's not easy. But guys, I challenge you, fill this card up and put it somewhere where your spouse is going to see it this week. And uh, hus- or wives, my challenge for you is this. I want you to take your card, and I want you to tell your husband what you love about them and what you respect about them. Tell them how much you care about them. Tell them how much you value them. Give them the respect that they need. And just watch what God will do. Because if God commands us to do this, these must be the things that will help keep our relationships together. But it all starts with one of us choosing to break the cycle. And hopefully, this card, whatever it may be, whatever we write on it, will help break the cycle in your relationship this week so that you can start a new journey and chapter together. But I tell you what, no change will happen if you continue just to do what you're doing. Because obviously it's not working. Something needs to give. And I hope this card will be the catalyst and the change that you're looking for to get the relationship that you want. But one of you has to step up and do it. And so this week, that's my challenge to you. Now, for those of you who aren't married, what I want you to do is take this card because there's probably somebody in your life that could use some love or respect in their life. Maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a sibling, maybe it's a coworker, a friend, or a boss, whoever it may be. I want you to write them just a letter of encouragement and leave it on their desk, leave it somewhere you know, in the community, whatever it is, and give it to them this week. And that's my challenge to you so that all of us choose this week to give away what we're ultimately looking to get and watch how God will use it. Cool, can we do that? Three of you, awesome. I'm glad you, y'all got it. The rest of you, good luck. Hope your relationships work out. <laughs> let's stand and close today as we um, finish up. And uh, let's pray together and ask God to be with our, our marriages, our relationships, our families, whatever you may be going through this morning. I'm just gonna ask God to be with you as you leave here and take these cards and use them as an encouragement to somebody. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for our time together today. God, I thank you for your word and just the simple reminders that you give us, God, of how we need love and respect. So God, I pray for the husbands in here today that you help them man up and step up to the plate and give their spouse the love that they need. God, I pray for the wives in here today. God, I know it's hard sometimes to show respect that that isn't earned or deserved, but God, I pray that you be with them as they do that and write that card this week. And God, for all of us, no matter where we are, we know people in our lives that need our time and attention. And I pray, God, through a simple act of kindness, that you could use it to do something special. God, we thank you for our time together and here today. God, I pray for all the needs that are among us, God, the people who are struggling and suffering in their families with anything going on, God, we lift them up to you today. And God, we ask that you bring us back here next week as we continue to learn more about you and how you love us so we can love one another better. In your name we pray, amen. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for being here today. Like I said, this is just part one. I'll be back with you next week. We'll have some fun actually learning how to do some of this. So come back next week, bring some friends and family, and I hope you have a blessed Sunday. Have a great day. We hope this message will help you continue to explore, experience, and express God's grace and truth for your life. If Atley Church is making a difference in your life, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions from this message, we'd love to talk to you. Email us at stories at atleychurch.org. Check out our website for more about our community, our ministries, and how you can financially support Atley Church to help us continue to share messages like this one. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We have links on our website where you can search for us on iTunes to get this podcast every week. Thanks again and hope to see you next Sunday.